It's a beautiful morning or daytime or nighttime. We're not going to judge what time you're listening to this podcast. But if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome back to a brand new podcast. We're the Takeaway Take Table, uh, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Table Talk. It's oh. your boy, The Mings. Hey. And before we introduce our guests, I think it's only right that we uh, take this moment okay. in time to just, you know, breathe in. Oh, okay. Because... Because it's about to get real today. Oh boy. Um, how you guys doing? Hope you guys have had a great weekend. How have you been, Mingan? Uh, I've been sick. Yeah. Um, I think everyone's been sick. Uh, yeah, it's a You've bug going sick. around. Uh, literally. Uh, how then why you invite me? Huh? You why came you here sick? on your own. Yeah, no, no, we're okay now. Are you <laughs> sick? <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Why it's okay, the Mr. bugs. Dog it's it's, it's, it's dog fine. Here. You'll be absolutely hey, wait, fine. Question, be, uh. am I allowed to cuss? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. This okay. is podcast. Yes. Okay, carry on. Sorry, they haven't introduced yeah, me. Yeah, we haven't. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> we just uh, pretend that the voice wasn't here before this. Um, <laughs> Speaking of which, hmm, I wonder who this is. No, we are. I mean, if you guys are clicking on this uh, podcast, it's already because you know someone's here. Oh yeah. Uh, the video is capturing all of this. I love it. <laughs> you you need to watch the YouTube podcast for this one because he's just a visual a treat. visual treat. Visual he treat. is, ladies and gentlemen. Today in the studio we have uh, royalty, a legend, the royalty of Singapore, royalty, YouTube royalty. National no treasure. Uh, stylist, per- perfectionist. Culture heritage. He was recently stormed during Halloween. <laughs> uh, also- and Kuma. <laughs> ah! No, 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 but I, I feel like we have to do this properly. Okay. Um, godfather of the YouTube scene in Singapore and also oh. I would say Southeast Asia. Oh. Uh, previously, one half of the Muna Hersey official. Oh. Today, co-founder and brain beauty of the Banzi Project. This is a very long intro. He just had a show it's in KL. It's been 10 years, yeah. Wow. He just had a show in KL. Wow. Uh, he's also a stand-up comedian. Wow. Uh, he's a queen. Fra. That we all deserve. Skr- Sometimes we don't. Beyonce it's reincarnate. Tr- Nobody yes, deserves Beyonce's that. Malaysian count. Uh, sorry, Whoa. I just claimed you. I just claimed you. Whoa. Singapore. <laughs> Singapore. Singapore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Hersey in the studio. <laughs> oh my gosh, welcome. Mm. Welcome, welcome guys. Thank you for that amazing intro. That was, that was, can you write my bio, please? Because I, that was concise. We can I just, actually do write bios. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We cool. just, just captioned the video, <laughs> you can take it. So Hazi, what brings you to the Plus 60s uh, this fine weekend? Hey, what is Singapore? Plus 65. Plus 65. Oh. I don't know why five though. Like why are we five ahead of- You know the okay. funny part is- You always are ahead, so. <laughs> Malaysia is here, Australia is there, and it's plus 60 and plus 61. And in the middle is Singapore is plus 65. I, I think your country code maybe comes from when independence happened. Is it? That is doesn't it? make sense. That no, doesn't make 59, sense. But Australia 50, never- 57, 1957, Australia sorry. is plus 61. Anyhow. No, no, so maybe Australia got independence after huh? you guys? That is not true. That Lee Kuan Yew, Lee Kuan Yew, you just wanted like five more. <laughs> well, we can at least confirm that uh, he did not come here for any historical lessons. So, yeah, sure. what were you doing over the weekend? Uh, what, brought, what brings me here? Mm. Uh, Bumi Putra. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> That it's is true. actually true. It's true. Half. Uh, well, I, I was here for a comedy show. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, Laugh Mania. They, yes. they invited me. That was happening at Menara Ken, TTTI. That was oh. amazing. We had amazing lineup. We had a Project Disco Paul. You guys have amazing comedy uh, mm. sketches. And you went to a really here. new venue too, by the way. Was it really? Yeah. I did, I, I did, yeah, it, it looked amazing. It's great. There's like yeah. a real big statue in the middle of the foyer, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's the one, yeah. Uh, and Joanne Kam was there. Mm. It's so difficult to come before Joanne or after <laughs> Joanne. Because <laughs> she's so senior. She's been in the business for so long. <laughs> really? Yeah, she's so senior. It's so intimidating. You might have to have a long way before she comes. Okay. Uh, That's just, right, guys. Joanne is so old. <laughs> this is the real of Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> like, jo- <laughs> Joanne is so old. She had to change her name to Joanne. Joanne came. Oh, <laughs> I re- Joanne, if you're listening. I asked okay, how ahead. vulgar I could be. Do you, you, do you ahead, think Joanne is listening to the podcast? Oh, you know what? Joanne is like my mama son here. I okay. adore her. She is literally like, she. I'm her Anna I am. She calls it and I accept mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, I think our love relationships like that. We, com- comics are like that. We're so harsh with each other, but yeah. that's how we show love. Speaking of comics, yes. how do, what, what are your thoughts on the Malaysian comics uh, and maybe the, 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 the stand-up comedy scene here? I think if Malaysia is smart, that you guys need to start realizing that comedy here is the biggest consumed audience in right. Southeast Asia. We're talking English urban comedy as well. Right. And maybe even in Bahasa, why not, right? right. But in terms of consuming stand-up in English, Malaysia's market is the most mature. Wow, we really? don't even have that. Like in Singapore, we have like the 
I would call the OGs, the likes of Kumas and Hosans. Mm. Uh, and then the next batch would be Faz's batch. That would be Farka Faz. Yeah. That would be Sharul, Rishi. And then uh, right very close are all the, the, the younger ones like Sam oh. C and whatnot. And I would consider myself still new because I wouldn't, I wouldn't even like establish Faz, myself. How old is Faz? He's old. No, but Faz has been in the scene yeah. since 2012. Uh, so okay, okay. Uh, Singapore is still the same pool rotating but you right, guys right, right. you guys have your comics in Bahasa you guys have your comics in English and your audience in are not selfish and, yeah. like if you can sell out three shows in a weekend right. and you guys have two comedy clubs happening every weekend that's just how much Malaysia is ready to be the forefront of comedy in Southeast Asia right yeah. and that's, then, that's uh, some real market insight guys yeah given the fact that our, you know Malaysia has been on the the comic page of the world for the last few years we really have no Kind no of excuse. Sense. In Asia, you guys are second to India, and that's a huge market. Really? You guys are second to India. That, that would when it comes to English in Asia, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so Ming Yu, why are you not doing stand up? <laughs> that's yeah, my question. This is a <clears throat> hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't know if if because this is video and podcast at the same right, so right. I don't know if you guys can insert a clip of your wedding, Ming Han. Oh. But Ming Yu gave a like it wasn't a best man speech, it was literally a stand-up set. He performed <laughs> on top of Ming the Ming's father's yeah. comedy. Comedy set. Oh my god, that was basically my wedding was the roast of Ming Han. The roast of Ming Han was, was correct. Quite, it was quite right. I would say. Yeah, literally for at least one hour straight. Question: Is that video not up? Is there no video I of your speech? I, I, I don't think we uploaded the full version, what but we hell? have the videos. You need to upload it. <laughs> it but, is genius. But we, only friends would get it. You see. Yeah, like, but yeah. like the, the caption could be as simple as YouTuber gets roast on his wedding okay, by okay. his father and brother. <laughs> that shit will go viral. <laughs> okay, you know what? Okay, we, please we, put it up. It was so no. funny. Yeah, no, but it's something that that, <laughs> that you talked to me about mm-hmm. like a couple years ago, and you never listened. I no, <laughs> right? Because I'm Malay, you don't want to listen, I, is it? It's something that I've I, I keep thinking about it until now. Uh, there's there's the fear yeah. of like you know, uh, should I start now? Should I, what what do people think? You know, yeah. um, but there's also maybe I'm just like maybe I'm, I'm not ready yet. How did you know you were ready? I never it? know. So I mean, it's something that I've. I've really considered and I've internalized it. I've, it's kept me up many nights. Hmm. Uh, but I think the question I have for myself, and probably if someone, you could probably answer this. How did you, how did you, you know you were ready to do it? Yeah, isn't it scary? Yeah. Oh, uh, the, the, the correct answer is you never know. Mm. You never know. So just throw yourself in the deep end. Everything that is excruciatingly painful or embarrassing that you go through is part of the process. I, and I, I posted it yesterday. I said, always, always, always trust in your own growth. Yeah. Mm. Like when I went in the scene, there were a lot of talks about who is this YouTuber correct, who's correct, trying correct. to do stand up? Like yeah, right. why is he entering our lane? And the truth is I don't believe in lanes. I think people who believe in lanes limit your own growth because you, when you're afraid of people entering your lane, what right. you're trying to say is I have a lane only. Yeah. Not realizing you too have multiple lanes. You are, right. You're multifaceted. You can travel and, and transcend your comedy into uh, comedy sketches, to acting, to TV, yeah. to hosting. Uh, and so just, I would say, throw yourself in the deep end. Trust that everything that happens to you, both the good and the bad and the highs and the lows are mm-hmm. part of the process. What the heck, guys? Seven yeah. minutes in, if you want to stop the podcast, that's your takeaway right there. Claim oh, your lanes, man. Take away. Okay. Um, the stigma of YouTubing is no... No stranger. No. Uh, sorry. I say fuck. Oh, can I say that? Can, yeah. I say you fuck just did. that shit. <laughs> okay, people who have stigmas on YouTube is look, they are good and bad in every scene. They are yeah. like, and I don't deny that there are people who water down the YouTuber scenes to, to be as a uh, lowbrow comedy, slapstick comedy. Oh, yeah. But there are great content creators who've established ourselves in the last 10 years, right. who, who now are maturing our production, who are, yeah. are becoming our own economics, in fact. And you, you, you cannot have one label of a stigma of YouTubers and label it across. That's number one, stereotypical. And yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like racism on an industry. It's e-racism. It's e-racism. It's e-racism. Oh my God, that's so clever. Huh? E- Erasing, uh, e-ra- is, that, is that what you're trying oh, to say? Uh, e-racism. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. I, my brain went to mean, all the yeah, way. It went all the way. Yeah. It went, sorry, yes. But you know what I find the irony? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <Sorry. laughs> e-racism. 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 Erasing racism. Huh? Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, right? Cancel, cancel that, order. Cancel. No take away. I think... <laughs> I when when you were talking about that, it just made me realize something, right? We we literally um, have to go up against this whole stigma of being YouTubers, quote unquote, and everything is like devalued a bit because these guys are YouTubers. But then, right, these days, 
normal people, let's say, quote unquote, non-YouTubers who are uh, actors, singers, comedians, so on and so forth, they're jumping on board the YouTube wagon. Correct. Because they need to get out there and stuff. Why doesn't it degrade them? You know, why doesn't it degrade their art? Is it really where you started or is it just a, really just a bad excuse? I, I, I oof, this, oof. This, this is the thing. Like the stigma is, is literally because people cannot get ahead of, so when social media started, yeah. there, there were people that have already been established in the industry who jumped in on the social media wagon late. And then there were people who were using it to genuinely, uh, in, instill our passion and like grow it, you know, like right. facilitate, develop our talent. Right. And and that's what happened essentially. But over time, the economics transferred over to the, to the social media gamers and numbers became the matrix. So right. that, that jealousy of why are they getting the gigs just because on paper, on black and white, that right. it's, it's so obvious, like, okay, give this guy the gig because they guy, these guys have the following to, to me, like I, I say, fuck the rules. If, if you are, if you are someone who are smart, why would you want to go the long route when you know there's a shortcut? Right. If waste now you sleep left, then you sleep left, lah, right? Like there's a shorter way to get there. Why right. you don't want to get there faster? You go, uh, I think. Right? And, and people, people, I mean, this this happened a year ago where I was very hyper and I had anxiety about my stand up. Like yeah. I was so depressed oh, and stressed say. up every time yeah. because of the stigma. Like I said, I have to prove myself now. Like what? What would people say? Like I'm entering their lane. So, and I say to myself, if I sell out a show, I sell out to my audience that I've developed in the last 10 years right, anyways. Yeah. And that is me doing my own mics. That yeah. is me developing right. my writing. Right. So you can't say that Hughesy uh, is is someone who didn't do the rounds of the open mics and wonders. Yeah. And I want to, I will. Mm. Uh, but my first few shows, if I sell out, you can't you call me out on that because these are not your audiences that I stole mm. or I ate into. And even Correct. if I did, who cares? We're growing together as a scene. Correct. People need to stop thinking about the competition and say like, how can we grow our pond? How can we make this pond bigger yeah. versus thinking that there's only going to be a few baits in this pond to yeah, buy? Right. Yeah. Right. I think there's any training that the YouTube community should have it's Collab. Had. Yeah, it's collab. Yeah. You mm -hmm. grow because you collaborate, but apparently it doesn't work the same way when you, you, you leave the YouTube pond mm. and everyone gets a bit like territorial and like you stay in your lane and like don't come here. There is no lanes. And when, then, yeah. yeah, and then suddenly people are like, Alama, we need social media pool. Hey, hey call the YouTubers. Yeah. You know? And then call them to muscle our TV series, our movie, our Correct. this and that. It's like we've just become a number to people. Like we mm. we are the number game. But if 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 people just realize, hey, these are the the YouTubers' strengths, and these are the um, mainstream industry strengths, and and merge and collab and right. like break the chains and the stigmas of each other's barriers, right. then you create your own economies. One thing I'm fucking proud about being a YouTuber, and mm. I'm never embarrassed, mm. is that we started out doing every element of our work. We yes, were our right. camera guys, we were right, our editors. Yeah. So we are one of the content creators who knows every element of production. Mm. We are not just talent who rock up on set, who don't know what a schedule is. Like mm. literally when I rock up on set now as a talent, I know, okay, the AD is going to be stressed about this, 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 that. How can I yeah. ele elevate that stress off her? Yeah. Just to be safe. Yeah. The your... camera guys need this, this, this. The sound guys need that, that, that. So You're how- one do... of the smarter YouTubers. No, YouTubers are smart. That, some, like... some of them, some of them. Some... Some of them. Some of them. Like the say, original YouTubers yeah. are yeah. smart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kim's loving this right now. Kim is just... Because we, we, we do work with YouTubers these days. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, uh, and most wow. of them use uh, a phone to record, you know. Yeah. He's talking about Dan Cool, right? Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. Dan Cook, no, no, sleep Dan, <laughs> Dan Cook's got a proper camera. We are really like trying to drop his name in every podcast. We are. It, it's just an Easter egg at this to point. To actually see when he actually tunes in. He doesn't in. listen to podcasts. Actually. Uh -huh. You want to give a quick message to Dan Cook? Dear Dan Cook, insert <laughs> dramatic music yeah. here. If you're out there, people are wondering, where are you? How have you been? We've missed you <laughs> and your skinny self. Yes. Oh. Have you been nourished lately? <laughs> Are you dating anybody? <laughs> he's not, he's not by the way. What ah. you? Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, back to our regular <laughs> programming. <laughs> no, oh okay. no! Yeah, since That's we're- horrible! You know, since we're talking about YouTube, I feel like it's only right we touched um, a Myself. little bit- Myself, eh? Hey. Himself, hmm. ourselves, itself, uh, on his beautiful and rich history <gasps> on the tubes. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's been a while. You are no straight, how long have you been uh, how long has it been since you started video one Ooh. of Muna Herzi Official? We, 
the first okay the first ever video we ever uploaded was actually a school video that went viral mm. oh. uh that was 2007 oh my goodness but uh, yeah so when youtube first started we joined the the bandwagon real quick but the first moon here's your official video was 2008 mm. which means in 2020 it would have been 12 years yep. could you imagine that you wow wow, you, wow. that was wow. where you spent your your life yeah Right. I always say like if if you guys used to fap to Moon and Hirzi, they're 30 now. Oh, How no. old are you? <laughs> oh, okay, it's a very different set of audience. <laughs> but hey, well, we're going to accept that. How has it been? <clears throat> so, two years ago, was it mm. two years ago that you did your uh your your goodbye show? 2018 January, yes. So this yeah, okay. It would have been about two about years. About two years la. now. Yes. Uh you did your farewell show with Moon yes. at the Capitol Theater. Sorry, who? Oh! <laughs> I love it. Well, Una, you got money. So it's been about two years now. Right. How everyone wants to know this because every time you guys are are seen together on social media or at events, yeah. people always ask, "Oh my <gasps> gosh, are you guys getting back together? Are you guys hanging out?" <laughs> Tell us what's going on Let's with Muna. Everyone listening, you guys are gonna get the real inside, the official, yeah, yeah be, <laughs> the Let's real life be, behind the camera. And if Muna ever <laughs> ever wants to defend herself, then come all the way down here to do it. <laughs> Does Muna even listen to podcasts? Does Muna ever have friends? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Where is all this coming from, Rizzi? No, I love her so much. Yeah. Like, like behind the scenes, people don't know this, but Muna is still a, a huge part of my, I guess, backbone. Like we depend on each other a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think our lives had a very, very interesting turn. Like at 30, we've become very, very interesting people. And this is, this is, this is public news now that can go out there okay. for the first time ever. Muna is single. Oh my goodness. <gasps> you, you've literally ever. opened up the, the gates of hell. Gates, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this is announced like Muna has been attached for all of her 20s. Yeah. <gasps> and now she's 30. Oh. She's single. She's in the market. And it's so cute to see Muna trying to date. Oh. It's really, really cute. I and, cannot imagine. And like we're there for each other in that sense. So like, you know, is she... <laughs> yeah, it, it's just our friendship is very cute now and our friendship's very authentic. We get what we wanted, which was like <laughs> not meet each other only for work yeah. right. and meet each other yes. for friendship. Yes. yes, So we have that. The problem with that is That's we don't great. get each other's time. Mm. So I see her like once every month or once every two months. Oh man. But uh, it's intentional when you meet, right? It's- Yeah. I hope it's so. accidental. <laughs> Sounds a little. <laughs> Some, I'm not gonna go there. Sometimes you gotta schedule her yeah. and then like ask, can we please really just <laughs> hang out? Yeah, it's been a while, but that that's been Muna Hirzi. You know we've been very diligent. Yes, like right. every client that has set us down and pitched us a gig, mm. we have said no. Mm. We mm. said no. We've mm. we've split up. Like yeah. we we can't. Sam will lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Brings But us you to the see, next. They Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Business. Oh, I didn't say it. Oh. Ming Han said it. Chinese. <laughs> Not like the same. Though. Which <laughs> brings us to the next point, right? So now we, we, we've we've Muna voted <laughs> off the island, right? <laughs> now that there's no space for her on board the Titanic, you've got a new squeeze. Mm. Uh, and you Last guys are making it. waves. You guys are Thank making you. waves. This, this, is the, this is the update that I've been waiting to talk about. No, well. no. We This is the part we got to unpack properly. Yeah, yes. there, there we go. Unpack. Um, the package is not that big. Okay. Oh, sh- okay. <laughs> so from the four willows, you chose the least talented one. To ah! make your- oh my goodness. Sorry. I'm just kidding, Ben. You're so beautiful. <laughs> I told him he does comedy all the time. His music is so funny. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> oh my God. No, for real. Ben is a beautiful human being. Mm. Inside and out. He's fucking talented. He is. He's right? fucking talented. And, you, and, and what, at what point in your friendship with these four Chinese kids, you were like, <laughs> this is the chosen one. One. You will now be my Robin. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, first of all, once I left Muna Hirzi, the shackles were free for me to literally shackles. collaborate. Okay. I mean, I wasn't bounded, but like, <laughs> no, right, like right. the branding of Muna Hirzi was so tight that mm, mm. like I, I couldn't create art with other people without feeling like, yeah. mm, am, I am I watering down Muna mm, Hirzi? Right. So I, if you think about it, Ben is not my only collaborator. I, I've done series with Dikosh. And also everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I, I literally open like my art out. Okay, whoever wants to make babies with me, right. my sperm's ready. Okay. Uh, okay. And That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And ben, ben has been someone who I've, the first time I worked with and I was fascinated with him was, mm. I was the assistant director on set and he was the lead. It mm. was, yes, it was, I it was the breakup program. list. Yes, yes. And I remember like assisting directing on set and going like, this, this kid has something, this kid has, an in-depth intelligence. Mm. What I feel is that the scripts that he's been landed or given 
with do justice, mainstream yeah. media. Don't, don't, don't do Ben's talent justice. Right, right, right. Uh, and so that was 2016. Now, fast forward to 2017. I remember reaching out to him while I was editing videos for the Muna Hirzi Finale show. And I remember that there was a commission season happening with like a, a, a network. Mm. And so I reached out to him and I said, hey, do you remember we were working on this and we, we, were, rif we were rifting like uh, ideas and whatnot. Mm. So do you want to do you want to pitch a, a season with me uh, for this network? And then they and then he was like, hmm, interesting. L let me know. We sat on it, never pitched to the network, yeah. mm -hmm. but I wanted to create a series, yeah. kind of like a friend. Right. I wanted to create like a narrative series, and he uh, was sitting on this idea of a comedy sketch series mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. So that was during 17 December. And we've been talking and workshopping and developing throughout the whole of 2018. Finally dropped our content uh, in Christmas of last year. So it's almost been a year yeah. of Benzi. Right. And like drop after drop after drop. It's like the crowd is just so like, I have never, I'm sorry, Muna, but I have never done a series or a project with someone that I right. know could give me the biggest growth or development of my career. Wow, yeah. right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So that's how that that's a timeline of how Benzi started. So there was a whole year of thinking about the Benzi project. Yes. And when you guys dropped it, it hit like a bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It we were blew secretive. up. Thank you. I mean, albeit the the fact that it's really Singapore. I always blow up. Okay. 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 No wonder it speaks in your work. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it is an amazing series of comedy sketches. Yeah. I'll be honest, Mingyu and I. We felt challenged, man. Really? No, challenged, really. I felt motivated, like dude, inspired. Oh, shucks. I mean, at the risk, we're gonna put it out here because you know yeah. you're on the show. At at the risk of saying this. I have not felt motivated to write comedy in years because That's everything good. I've watched around me is trash. <laughs> Hot trash. But when you guys- Even even, even the stuff we, we've made, I, I just gotta put yeah. that out there. Even yeah, we the went we've through trash we've, seasons. We, we, we've had trash seasons, man. Uh, we are in a trash season right now. I, I mean, then again, I'm sure Benzie is still so infant that we might, and I hope we don't uh, like enter trashy terrains, but right. that's part of, that's part but of, that's part of part going, of right? that, you, and that's part of content creating. Right, yeah. You're going to hit a plateau. And then when you hit that plateau, ask yourself, what is my next yeah, uh, development exactly, of this? Exactly. You got to be really unamused yourself to like find the next, you know, muse. Correct. I, correct. I believe in it. But yeah, when you guys put it out, it was so well done. Yeah. You know, it was so real, you know, quote unquote real, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it, came, it, came, it really sounded like it came from a real place. And the quality of it, guys, I'm just pretty much singing the praises of the Benzie project right now. <laughs> um, if you all have not watched it, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Just shut up, stop the podcast, go and check out Benzie project. There is YouTube. no time for us to go through all the videos uh, and no. it's on itself. But where did that lead you guys? Yeah, like right now you guys today? are uh, freaking Comedy Central oh. Asia, man. Yes, oh, yes, yes, that? yes, yes. Oh. Uh, uh, so ho hopefully one day we'll get an entire proper commission season, but uh, we are the hosts of this season that they have, this series they have called Stand Up Asia, mm. uh -huh. where stand up comics basically perform their sets and whatnot. Uh, I was actually pitched to to try and be one of the comics to do the stand up, but mm. I, I uno reverse them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> at the point of time, I was more concerned with like really developing Benzie's growth. So I, I pitched them the Benzie mm. project. I, I sat down and, mm. and Ben and I sat them down. Uh, we, we pitched the Benzie project. Mm. Obviously it would take a lot more like uh, legwork and whatnot to, to hopefully one day get a season on network. But mm. what they've decided from that meeting was, hey, let's get them to host yeah. the Stand Up Asia mm. and in between pepper the Benzie Project sketches, yes. kind of like an SNL format. I love it, yeah. And mm. it's exciting because we are now writing content for the region. Mm. So there's a Man. lot of Malaysian Singaporean scripts. Man. There, there, there are a couple of like uh, themes that are outside of just Singapore's narrative. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's fun. Like we have one on Asian blindness, like how you can never tell Asians apart. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my oh goodness. Boy. So it's, it's I, 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 I hope it's good because there's something about when you create your own baby, you're so meticulous with every curation of the editing, the scoring. Right, right. But now we are letting someone daycare our baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so that's exciting to see how it is. Production was absolutely a joy to be around. Mm. It was tip top quality. Like the 80 on set was the 80 for Crazy Rich Asians. Oh my so what like oh. it, was, it was It was really a joy to work with, with them in terms of production. Yeah. And when is this coming out? November 12th, oh, out on goodness. Comedy Central Literally, Asia. You heard uh, this, yeah. It's about- 10 days. 
eight days. What can you tell? I'm Malay. I do math. It's eight days. Eight days away. Guys, eight days away. My four plus eight. eight. Twelve. <laughs> no, but okay. I, I have to say, so the ben, the Benzi project came at a point in time of uh, at least in this region. If you're not from Malaysia, Singapore, you might not understand this one. But um, YouTube had started to become stale. It had started to become mm. this, you know, repetitive sort of like ten types of teachers, four types of, you know, Dan Ku still doing that. Jen Shout Hao. out to Dan Ku. <laughs> Jen is still doing that. He's speaking yes. money, so he works out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a cute shout out, Jenna. Congrats again. Well, we don't really know each other, but here's he knows you, so it's okay. Proxy. Yes. Um, so YouTube started to become this oh, this stupid thing where everyone just had to do something that that that, that, that made the audience happy, right? Yeah. Um, and no one wanted to do anything besides that because if if it worked, yeah, don't don't fix it. It it started to to follow this fast food format, you know. Yeah. You get a McValley meal, you get a drink, you get the burger, you get the fries. What the hell? You know, you get the 12 <laughs> types. It's true. You get the, you get the types. Types. analogy. Right? It's true. Yeah. But you get nothing else. You don't get the real beef. You get like right. a random and, burger. And I think for us, as, 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 as I mean, we've been doing this for a while. And I think technically that's how TMT started off. Like, like shorts and sketches and stuff like that. We became- You guys are so, so good at it. <sighs> you guys are so good at it. I mean, okay, I, I mean, were? you guys are. So <laughs> no. Good. no, we uh, were, you're no, right. No, we were. <laughs> no, 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 like, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> like when I first saw your sketches, I was like, who are these guys? Cause like one of my favorite is this irreverent sketch you guys did on the milk. Yeah. Oh my God. Why does everyone keep bringing Recently, this one it's up? It's popping up again, man, that one. It's yeah. insane. No, there is some, there is the delivery of irreverent humor that you guys were kings of. Right, right. And, okay, so this is the thing that I feel about myself that has been consistent. Mm. Uh, in Muna Hirzi, in the 10 years of body of work that we've done, we never stayed in one thing for too long. Right. We did the prank series, right. and when the prank series was- I was the prank series <laughs> was, so was, was at its prime, we cut it off, yeah. and then we did a, 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 a like a rant series, so sex appeal and jokes uh, about social commentaries and whatnot. <laughs> and then when, when that peaked at its prime, we changed to parodies. <laughs> and I think as YouTubers online, one of, one of my best advice is to always reinvent. Mm -hmm. Find a new favorite thing about yourself to explore and then put it out there. Mm. So like, when I went solo, I knew I wanted to do the parody stuff still because if I did a live show, those would be a create. Uh, there was a gr there would be a yeah. great arsenal yes. uh, for right. me to perform. Right. But at the same time, I thought like, hmm, what should I do with someone like Dikosh? Mm. What is my strength with Dikosh? What would right. my, our baby look like? It would be a rent series. Mm. Uh, and then what would my thing with with Ben be? And it would have been a comedy sketch series. Yeah, right, right. Always reinvent. I think that's. That that excites the audience. That's where YouTubers don't go still. Yeah. I feel like we still have a chance. I actually want to. I've been on this mission to to get back to the OG YouTubers of Singapore and say, hey, let's reclaim back YouTubing. Wow. Uh, be to be honest, like yeah. really watching you. Uh, I I remember being at your farewell show and seeing you guys on stage. I think we asked you after the show as well, like what's next, right? Yeah. And I think at that point, I'm pretty sure you had an idea. No, because my favorite moment from, from that show was, um, so for everyone who wasn't at the show, shame mm -hmm. on you. Uh, but basically there was um, two platforms on yeah. the stage, right? Yeah. And there was a uh, makeup mirror where Muna Hirzi both individually kind of stood at. Right. And then both lights were on, the stage was dark, and then both lights went off. And everyone was in tears at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And then after maybe about half a minute, Hirzi's makeup uh, mirror lights came on again. No, and then you know, I didn't go off at all. Uh. No, only, it didn't go off didn't at go all. Off? Only Muna's oh. one went off. Muna's okay. one went off first. And then, yeah, yeah. And then we, okay. we all waited. And, we, and then we were waiting for him to turn it off. Yeah. But he never did. And everyone was just like, oh my God, and then, yeah. and, and scene. And then people were just literally I love shitting it. themselves. Oh, no, is this kind of thing? Suspense, things? right? Yeah. You're like the fucking truth. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's oh, hear the, it. The switch was out. Oh, no, 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 no. So what happened was like, we are so busy directing and oh, like, no. right. Muna and I were like so involved with the process that at one point of time, I remember that was the direction that the art, uh, the, Artistic director uh, decided, hey, let's let's end off with you guys closing your own respective makeup mirrors. Mm. And I remember saying a yes, and I was passing. And then so on that day itself, he was briefing us while we were doing rehearsal and whatnot. Okay, so this is the switch, yada, yada, yada. Mm. And I remember saying yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. So on that stage, I was under the assumption that stage hands was gonna switch it off together. Oh, I forgot wow. him saying that once you guys look at each other, take your own time. He did say take your own time whenever you guys, whenever it feels natural, switch off that light. Cause he, 
Irfan got banned so actually, right there. Muna switched it off. So Muna switched it off. <laughs> and, and you I, just forgot. And I was so in the zone. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was literally. You were so emotional. <laughs> I was so emotional <laughs> that I forgot that you switch off your own lights. I completely forgot. And some and, and, and so that scene dragged and stretched, which is just the most beautiful natural life. Metaphor, it was right, right? Yeah. Like, Life decided What it was it gonna be instead out. Dude I thought Okay I'm not gonna believe this story I'm just gonna stick to the version That I prefer Because <laughs> my so one cheated. was so much more beautiful uh, <laughs> So you just forgot But then again Think about it this way Life decided that Life decided it's that true, I could have If I switched it off At the same time then this won't make sense. This whole QZ right, posting right, right. won't make sense. But on that note, I have an exciting news for you guys. Okay. Muna's of- back. No. Do you see your eye roll? <laughs> of course, Muna QZ are always like, you know, we think ahead of our time. Yes, right. right. So w- there is no reunion. There's no reunion. But, 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 but while, a- uh, while Shasha taps out, <gasps> in 2020. Oh my gosh, no! Uh, you guys are gonna hear it first. <gasps> guys, exclusive on the table talk, yeah? Uh, Y'all hearing this first? Yeah. Uh, mm. So next year, uh, when Shasha takes a break at the end of her season, I think it will be her second year, mm. uh, it will be in April, May. Tapping in, <gasps> back to the idea. game, <gasps> into YouTube. Oh, <gasps> all the way from theater. Oh my goodness. It's <laughs> Miss Muno Bagwe. Oh my goodness. You guys are hearing it first. We, Is it? we haven't even announced it anywhere oh else. My goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my you guys really plan a hit? Mm-hmm. It's, oh my gosh. I, mm-hmm. I, oh. <laughs> they really, you guys, <laughs> they really plan a hit. Like how the lights happen, right? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> no, <laughs> sometimes he let, destiny decides. Yeah. 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 He lets <laughs> life think, it, think, yeah. think it's uh, oh, their man. own natural. Okay, you know, um, we, we, we've talked so much about Buna Hirzi. Mm. Mm. We've talked so much about Benzi. Talked about your uh, your performance here over the weekend, your show. What do you want to do next year? So mm. we are heading- Into uh, our 30s. Yeah, your 30s and also <laughs> next year- I'm already year, there. If you think about it, next year is the big year, right? Yeah. Next year was the Why, year uh? that, it's 2020. Oh, everyone! Yeah. When we were kids, we were like, "Twenty twenty is the year flying cars happening." Said what? Said who? That our government preached okay, that. Maybe to it's us. just our government. Yeah, we had they, this they, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, know, but but I mean, think about it this way. That was we, pre Najib lah. Uh, yeah, it was Mahathir's time. Mahathir, eh. <laughs> the oh, minute Mahathir, Najib oh. went into uh, power. So it's Wawasan like... Duplo Paplo. <laughs> 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 no, it just became Wah. More like Paplo and Paplo. Wah shit. Um. We, we've survived a, 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 another decade. Yes, we did. Right, mm-hmm. And, and what do you want to see yourself accomplish? Because if, if there's anything we know about Herzi, every time we meet up with him, he tells us about his else. brand new um, brand expedition new, brand he's new. about to launch. Yes. He's about to fly somewhere and, 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 and live life <laughs> to its fullest, right? He <laughs> streaks in you. He doesn't do that. Mm-mm. We don't know we for don't sure know. sometimes at night. Um, what's, what's coming up? Yeah, I, this time I ask you, what's exciting you in this next two months to a year? Mm. I have learned uh, so much this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually haven't told you guys this. I was going to tell you guys privately, but so more. yeah, so many things happen. <laughs> uh, but I have a reevaluated outlook on life, uh, and I have learned the importance of mental health and my physical health. Mm. So I am actually starting to strip off stresses of my plate. And so next wow. year, uh-huh. I want to do one thing at a time. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the first half of the year, I want to really focus on stand-up comedy first and, and really grow that, put right. up content online so that people can really say, oh, here is he is, this right, right. Uh, stand-up comic. And for the first time ever, mm. frankly, mm. I don't know what I'm doing. That's crazy. I've never heard you say that. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, wow. I don't know how much more minutes we have because this is going to take a little bit of- Take, go, go for take it, all the time it. you want. Okay. Yeah. So I had a health scare earlier in June this no year. No shit. Uh, and it was, until now, I have not followed up with an MRI. Uh. But what the doctors were suspecting at that point was a suspected stroke. Mm. Oh my God. You're the only one laughing yeah. about it, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, long story short, I was really overworking myself in May. This was Ramadan. Like I was right. doing the store, I was doing the Ramadan Bazaar store. I was doing content on Benzi. I was doing content on my channel. I was right. doing the Kosher series with myself, Sharia. Right. And uh, my body crashed and burned when yeah. I finally got to finish everything. I actually wanted to go on in June and do more work, but my body crashed and I had bronchitis from my mom. Mm-mm. Long story short. The next IG story uh, we see. Uh, I, <laughs> I, what do you call it? Like, 
Do you guys even want to hear the process of how it happened? Because it's kind of funny. Go for it. Let's hear it. Yeah, my stroke is so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're the only, only one who's thinking you, it's funny. Oh my I suspected gosh. stroke. Well, it was okay. suspected until now. Like I I mean, if I had a stroke, it would have been obvious. Yes. Uh, so one one of the days after I was recovering, when my medication finished, my cough syrup finished, mm. I broke my fast and then I was tasting, I was eating food and I couldn't taste. So yeah. I, okay, fine. I'll just go to the doctor later, get more cough syrup. Just I just wanted cough syrup. Mm. Went to the doctor and I was listing symptoms down, not realizing what it was. Yeah. Uh, mm. Like mm. I was just listing symptoms thinking like it's normal. I said I had, I had, a, I had a, a, a tension in the neck. I, I had tightness in my chest, uh, coughing, mm. breathing, uh, breathing difficulties, yada, 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 migraines. And then the, the last thing that I said that triggered him was that I said I couldn't taste. And I was like, oh, but that's normal. The doctor said, that's normal when you have this kind of flu and whatnot. So like, you can't taste and you can't smell. Mm. And I said, mm, I can smell anything. And I took, I took my perfume and I smelled my, my, the bottle head of the perfume and I said, yeah, I can smell. And he says, okay, that's weird. I'm not gonna give you any medication. I'm gonna give you a referral letter. You go to a &E now. Oh, oh gosh. And I'm like, so dramatic, man, for cough syrup. Oh, Singapore doctor, like this one. Uh, <laughs> Since the guy who's overworked himself for years. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, it, it didn't run in my head right, right. because apparently when you can't smell, but you can, when you can't, you can't taste and you can smell or vice versa, mm. it's, a, it's a nerve thing. Yeah. Mm. It's no longer just a flu. Yes. Uh, so he was concerned that I was listing down the symptoms of what would have been. At the point of time, he still didn't tell me a suspected stroke. Mm. So I casually thought it was just a cough thing that he was going to give me. I went back home, went on Instagram, huh. charged oh. my phone for two more hours. Uh. Oh. And then if this was like 9 p.m., 9.30 p.m. already. It was a Saturday night, I remember. I took my bag and then I casually take a cab, went to the, this nearest hospital, which is a new hospital, went in, gave them the letter to which everyone was giving me top quality service. I'm like, eh, is that an influencer? Uh. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and so then uh, uh -huh. they said, are you, are you okay? Uh, would you be able to walk? Do you need us to wheel you? And I was like, wow, oh. <laughs> influencer <laughs> service. <laughs> <laughs> so then they started, and then the doctor started taking me in and started doing ECG. I'm like, really for a cough guys? This yeah. is really like really too much. Like it's just bloody bronchitis. And then they said, so uh, would, you, would you be able to walk to this room or you want us to wheel you? They wheeled me on a bed. I'm like, you know Ooh, what? Wow. At this stage, I said fine at the first few I started walking, right? But at this point, I was like, sure, wheel me in. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and they wheeled me. They did an x ray test. Uh, they did blood tests. And they let me wait in the room for two, three more hours. I think what they were, I think this is what they were trying to do. Like, if a stroke were to happen in the next few hours, that they were just gonna yeah. wait it out. Observe, yeah. Yeah, yes. observe it. Because I was really doing nothing. I was on my Instagram, yeah. wishing I had Muna's power bank at this stage. <laughs> and then uh, the doctor comes in with the blood test and the x-ray test. And this is the doctor. Um, mm, mm, so, so, so we, we did the blood test and the x-ray test. And uh, um, basically we cannot diagnose you with the, the suspected stroke. And this was the first time I heard, heard it. the word of night. I was like, what? The fuck? <laughs> if I knew I was gonna get a stroke, I would have brought my family <laughs> member with me. I would have brought like someone else with me. So I I was like, what the hell? This is the funnier part. This is the funniest part. You would think we, we send doctors for like years of study that they would come up with better <sighs> tests, right? Do you know what he said next? He said, uh, and so after this, we're gonna do the, the we're gonna do a Milo test for your taste, but I said. The Milo, Milo test. Milo test. You go Mexican school for this hassle. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in with a Milo, and we all know, we all know what Milo hos uh, hospital yeah. Milo tastes like, right? Yeah. He comes in with a cup. I don't know if you saw my Instagram. He comes in with a cup of Milo, and so, uh, you can try and taste if you can still have a sensation of the taste bud. So I taste the Milo. I taste the hospital Milo. Yeah. So at this stage, I don't know if it's my taste bud yeah. or the hospital, oh, the hospital Milo. Milo. So I, I just stop and say, "It tastes the hospital Milo." Uh. <laughs> it's, 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 and he goes, mm, uh, but you can taste the chocolate a bit. I said, like, no. And I said, oh, but, but you can taste the milk. And I said, like, no, it just tastes like hospital Milo. Uh. <laughs> you know what he says? You know what he says? <laughs> Maybe I never put enough powder. <laughs> I think the most beautiful part about that <laughs> is that he made it himself. <laughs> and then I went back home, spent two hundred dollars on just cough syrup, anyways. <laughs> so uh, I got a referral letter after that saying, "Okay, we're gonna send you for MRI in July," but I couldn't go because I was in New York. 
oh, it's gonna be in New York. Oh. And then after that, uh, they uh. Uh, they say if in the next few days anything happened, just come back to the hospital. Oh. And so in the next few days, something did happen. I was gonna break my fast with my friend, and in the train, I already felt this, and I've never had it before. So I, I would, like, can you imagine having the anxiety of? an almost suspected oh, stroke. Yeah. And then suddenly yeah, like your brain feels like this warp sensation. Naturally, you would think like, oh my God, it's so, happening, it's yeah, happening, mm, it's happening. Mm, so yeah. I was in the train on the way to Bugis to, to break my fast with my friend. Still want to pass her, you know, sick, sick. <laughs> and then uh, I said, okay, you know what? Whatever happens, just walk to your friend first. Just walk to your friend. Cause mm. if it happens, you're with a person you know. Yeah. Uh, mm. Also cause you're an influencer, yeah? yeah. You don't want to be Cannot so embarrassed. You train. can't just have yeah. stroke in yeah. public. If you're you are who, huh? <laughs> yeah. I was going to draw a name, no. <laughs> 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 go, go. <laughs> so then I met my friend, I said, Afifa, oh my God, like I, I, I don't know. And she by now already know what, what's going on with my health. Mm. So I said, I, I don't know if it's happening, but like, like I, 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 I'm feeling warped. Like the earth was moving like that. Uh. Yeah, in my head. Uh, and then, so we sat down and I said, can you please do the, the, the test? You know, there's a series of tests. Yes, you do yes, someone's yes, 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 yeah. So then she started asking me questions and she asked, so what's happening? And bro, I, I remember almost crying because I couldn't push through my thought. Whoa. I she, she wanted to know what happened and I couldn't form words. I, like it was the weirdest thing. I couldn't think of how to string a sentence together. Oh my gosh. And I started hyperventilating. Like it just added onto the anxiety. Oh I started no. like tearing. I said, like, oh my God, I, 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 I can't, Aviva, I can't push through this thought. I can't push through this thought. And then she says, okay, never mind. So I said, ask me questions because she was my secondary school friend. So ask me questions from way back mm. and I could answer though. Yeah. Mm. I could answer all questions. I just, if you ask me to develop a string of thoughts, I couldn't okay, yeah. form a sentence. And she says, okay, can you raise your hand at this point of time? Because it's part of the test. So I raised my hand. <sighs> the pachi at the mama high five me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you understand now? I'm about to almost have a stroke. At least that's what I thought. And my life, the comedy just doesn't stop. The comedy doesn't stop. And when he high five me, I look at him, what the hell? <laughs> this was at uh, KJC, oh, what the hell? And he gets to smile. So I was like, so after the whole thing, my friend said, do you want to go home or do you want to go to the hospital? And then I said, I think just send me back first. Uh, I, I, I want to like at least calm down. So in the cab, she, she sent me home. We, in the cab, I sat for 10 minutes and I felt better after that. Yeah. So I, I checked with my headness friend who was helping me monitor this whole thing as well. And it turns out that I was letting out symptoms of vertigo because I was also having bronchitis. Right. Right. And that was my first time having vertigo. So I, 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 I was just so suspicious oh of it. God. Now that night though, I slept at 9 p.m., woke up at 3 a.m. because I wanted to cough again, which was uh, pretty common that week. And then blood came out my head. <laughs> my cough I was heck? thick flammed blood to which I was like oh my god okay maybe it was just me coughing too hard second time cough thicker blood came Th then I said okay I'm gonna try the third time before I decide that this is something to panic about and then blood came out again grabbed my stuff went to the same St. Kang hospital <laughs> <laughs> this time I was served by another doctor who was more complacent. So yeah. I had top service the first time round, and this time round, it was so complacent there was literally two people at 3am in the hospital in line because it was a new hospital mm -mm -mm -mm. and then uh, I went in and then the doctor said, oh, you were here three days ago. Why are you here again? I said, oh, uh, they said like, if anything happened to come back and yeah. I coughed blood out. And I said, like, mm, yeah, you're coughing too hard. Without testing, without checking anything. He just, he had, he yeah. knows. You're, he you're knows. coughing too hard. I oh. don't, maybe he muted. <laughs> maybe he professor. He, he wondered you. I don't know. He understand you. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know. You just want to check it out. So I waited for the next two, three hours just to do a blood pressure test and a stethoscope test oh. and said, and then they said, yeah, you're coughing too hard. So here's some more cough med medicine. Oh, and exactly what you Yeah, did. so for the next few days, I didn't cough too hard. Yep. <laughs> Every time I want to cough out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no blood, no blood. Yeah, uh, eventually- <laughs> So can you give us one more time how you cough? <laughs> <laughs> so throughout June, I didn't go out. I didn't do work. I didn't touch anything until uh, I recovered fully until I was in New York. So yeah. it was that long. Oh my God, I didn't even tell the part where someone died on my flight, you know? So many things happened. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Okay, oh my, we need to hear this story. Later, later, later. Okay. So I finally oh started recovering in New York. Oh my God. And my MRI was scheduled for July. I haven't gone. <laughs> Oh. Uh, but I, that trip, that trip in New York and Mexico and Montreal really reevaluated how I look at life oh, and, and yeah. about ambition. So right. now my rule is if it's stressing me up and the money doesn't justify it, 
not doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I think my mental health is important to, to mm. put ahead and my physical health is important to put ahead of all yeah. that. Yeah. In yeah. Singapore, it's very different. Like people are so abusive with work. It is. Uh, and don't you guys work in Singapore, so you yeah. know the work culture Y'all there. don't take breaks. And it's not just us. And I think it's a top down thing, like where yeah. people just assume that because I'm paying you for work, you got I can it. expect yeah, your time. Yeah, yeah. If I'm emailing you at 12 a.m. and I expect a reply in the next five minutes, you got to do it. And, and that's bullshit mentality that right. Singaporeans have a problem with. And it's a huge part of what I want to lobby in next year is mm. a work-life balance. Yeah. Uh, it will be a huge part of what uh, I'll start, con- uh, you know, mm. condoning. Condoning? Okay. Thank you. That's great. Good night. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Man, I feel like there's, oh so, oh, there's so many more stories that we want to talk about. Especially that one. We're going to maybe, I feel like people <laughs> deserve to hear a IGTV exclusive for that one. Um, but- Oh my gosh. I'm so happy to hear. What an update, has he? Right? I'm so yeah. happy to hear that, that this is something that you're actually like, you know, it's, it's you, you people always tell you, you're working too hard. Yeah. yeah. And and every time we ask you what's next on your plate, you always tell us, oh, I'm doing this job. I'm going to try this out. We, we have this happening. I'm flying off. And there's been, never been a room to breathe for yeah. you, right? As a, as a there's, there's you, the work person, there's you, the creative, and then there's you, the individual, right? Yeah. And then I feel like now you're entering a season where you can finally breathe. Because I feel like at 30, you don't need to prove yourself anymore. Yeah. Like at 30, you've done a substantial body of work. Mm. You, you you cannot be insecure about yourself. You know your worth now. You mm. know what mm. you're good at. You know what you can be better at. Mm. And you, you should just aspire to be the mm. best version of yourself mm. so that all this noise around you about who you are, what kind of labels you are, what lane you're in, mm. doesn't need to matter anymore. Right. As long as I know what I'm good at, right. I'll continue to do that and be that because there is no need to explore insecurities anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and that yeah. really should never come at the cost of your personal life Correct. and health. And then shout out to all the Singaporean friends out there. Oh man, shout out. I think really more often than not, the only time your Singaporeans slow down is when something detrimental happens to your life. <laughs> you know, like a Milo like test. A scary, <laughs> yeah. If a doctor oh. walks in and says she, they got to give you a Milo test, it's really time to slow <laughs> down, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yo guys, this has been the Hersey official update. Oh my goodness. What a treat, man. What a treat. I don't even know what the segment went into this. And you know what <laughs> is what it is. It's a beautiful mess uh, called life right yeah. here. Uh, Hersey, any any closing words for, for the fellow friends out there? Uh, friends and fans. If a doctor thanks. tells you to drink Milo and the mama guy high fives you. <laughs> then your life is meant to do stand-up comedy. Yes, <laughs> I really think so. I really think so. <laughs> Please guys, stay updated to Hersey. It is, uh, what's your Instagram tag? At here's the official, because I don't need on a last Instagram. name. Oh, yes. there we go. He doesn't. <laughs> you can also check out his stuff with Ben on the Benzy project. project. Please do. Uh, stay updated. They're, they've got so much uh, great stuff that's happening. Oh my God. Um, then the next time I come back, I want to see you do your stand up. There you go. You have to no, you gotta really lock, do it. You got you to gotta lock him into a place somewhere that you're doing. There's just no trust. Just trust the process. Just trust how painful the embarrassing moments are going to be as and well. Think of because it's only going to get f-ing better after that. Yeah, man. Hersey is just he's life, man. He's life. Checks in with you from the time. Do you still drink Milo? <laughs> I I do, but it tastes better. That's, these days. that's great. If you guys want more takeaway table podcasts, we're available on Spotify and Apple Music. You can watch this on <laughs> YouTube as well. Mm-mm. Get ready for a brand new season of content. We're coming back. Otherwise, have a great week. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Keep it real. Take Zip a up your break pants. and take a break. Yeah, please. Break. That's all. all and be that. a father. Be a father. There won't be no breaks. Oh yeah. See you guys. <laughs>